Hi dancers, welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam and today we're doing a class for shoulder stability and mobility. So this is a vinyasa flow. It's a short little sequence that just really focuses on getting the shoulders moving, keeping them nice and strong. Also doing a couple of stretches to really target the chest and the upper back right between the shoulder blades. So we're just gonna go right ahead and get started. You're gonna begin on all fours. So your hands right underneath your shoulders, knees right underneath your hips, rolling through some cycles of cat and cow. So on the inhale, dropping the belly, lifting the gaze. Exhale, curving the spine in, lifting the belly button up. Once again, inhale, extend up. Exhale to curve. Twice more, just like that. Inhale, arching the back, lifting up. Exhale, drop the gaze down and curve. And let's do one more. Inhale. And exhale. And bring yourself back to a neutral place. We're just going to do 10 uh, scapular push-ups, I kind of like to call them. What this means is you're going to collapse into your shoulders. Think of pinching your shoulder blades together behind you and then push the floor away from you and wrap your shoulder blades down and around your back to really push yourself away from the floor. So we're gonna do that 10 times. You're gonna let the shoulder blades pinch together and then push apart. Pinch together, push apart. And as we do this, make sure that your core stays engaged. So the belly button is still pulling in towards your spine. I believe this is number five. And number six. Still try to have a nice long neck while we do this. So the shoulders aren't creeping up towards the ears. They're still falling down your back. And we're still creating space for the neck. And we'll do two more here, nine. And last one, 10. Pushing up. Great, from here you're gonna take your right hand, place it uh, behind your head. And then from here on an inhale, you're going to twist up towards the ceiling and really trying to lift that elbow as high as you can. And then on the exhale, bring that elbow all the way down, twisting in the opposite direction. And again, just like that, inhale to twist up. Exhale, twisting down. Twice more, inhale, all the way up. And exhale, down. Last round, inhale, push up as far as you can go, exhale. And now twist up one more time, this time extending the arm all the way up overhead. And then on the exhale, place that hand all the way down onto the floor. Rest your knee onto your mat. And then you can keep your left hand where it is or extend it out in front of you. So just stretching into that place right in between the shoulder blades. Loosening up the upper back. Feel that your hips are right over top of your knees in this posture. And the core is still slightly engaged. And we'll bring the left hand back underneath you if it was extended. And then on an inhale, push to re-extend that arm. See if it can go farther than it did the first time before you place it back down onto the mat. And we'll repeat that on the left side. So bring your left hand in, attaching to your, your head here. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, twist and cross. Inhale, really lift that elbow as high as it'll go. Exhale, to cross. Twice more, inhaling up. Exhale, down. And last one, inhaling up and exhale, and extending the arm all the way up to the ceiling this time, and then crossing it all the way down onto the mat, hips right over top of your knees, and then try to do the same variation with your right arm that you did on the first side, so whether that is extending it as I am here or keeping it underneath your shoulder. So take another three breaths here, breathing into wherever you feel this, Feeling that core so nice and engaged. And placing that right hand back under your shoulder. Inhale, push into the floor, re-extend it up. See how far you can go. 
and place it back down onto the mat. We're going to come from here right away into our first down dog. So tucking your toes, extend your palms out in front of you, and then lifting your hips up. You might want to paddle through the feet a little bit. Shake your head out yes and no. Bend and stretch the knees. Just take a second to get yourself settled in this posture, our first down dog of the sequence. Feel your spine nice and long. Most importantly, feel your shoulder blades sliding down your back. And now from here, just lifting your right leg, but keeping it straight and square towards the back. So the knee is still facing towards the floor. And then in exhale, just step it through in between the palms. And inhale, lifting the arms all the way up, finding a runner's lunge. Trying to maintain your front knee, bending right over top of your toes. And now from here, you're going to bend your right arm behind you and then wrap your left arm all the way around, trying to make connection with your fingers. Don't worry if there is still a little bit of space. Just try to send your intention into connecting those fingertips and interlacing those fingers. So we have runner's lunge with archer arms variation. So again, finding this flexibility and mobility throughout the shoulders here with this variation. Taking a couple more breaths. And we'll release these archer arms all the way back up overhead before we transition into warrior two. So flipping your back heel and extending your arms out directly beside you. Again, make sure that knee is opening up right over top of your toes and not collapsing towards the center. Feel your core nice and strong. Arms nice and long, reaching both in front and behind you. Feel the outside edge of your left foot still pressing into the mat. And we're gonna to transition to extended side angle. But I invite you to bring your right palm all the way down onto the mat and then extend your left arm up over top. Maybe looking up towards the ceiling, towards that palm actually, if, you, if it feels okay for the neck. And you're welcome to stay here in this position with the upper body or take it into a bind. So you're gonna reach that left arm behind you and then grab a hold of the right wrist as you wrap it underneath that right thigh. So whichever variation works for you today, we'll hold here for about another three breaths. And releasing, we're going to transition flipping the back heel up into easy twists. So now your left palm is down, right arm is reaching all the way up. So have a nice long line from the tip of your right fingers down to your left palm. And now from here, a little bit of a tricky transition. You're going to come into a side plank, but we're only transitioning through this. You're gonna take your right leg, reach it around back behind you to plant it onto the floor and then take this into a little bit of an arch behind you. So this is called wild thing. Keep that left leg nice and stretched. Try to keep the sole of your left foot in contact with the floor. Feeling that reach through the right arm and feeling the stability through your left shoulder. And on your next exhale, release Twist yourself back to a plank position. We'll hang out here for just a moment, recalibrate before we come into chaturanga. Inhaling through to upper dog, tucking the toes, exhale, back to down dog. Settling into this posture once more. Reconnect with your breath. And we'll go right ahead onto the left side. So now lifting your left leg up, keeping it straight and square. Exhale to step it forward in between the palms. Inhale the arms all the way up overhead. Maintaining 90 degrees through that front knee if you can. Keeping it right over top of the toes. And we're transitioning to arch your arms on this side so your left arm will bend behind your head. Right arm reaches all the way around and underneath you. Keeping the core nice and strong here. Pull your belly button in towards your spine. Feel that nice stretch to the front of the right hip. 
breathing through it. And we'll release these arms all the way back up overhead, transitioning now into warrior two. So twisting your back heel, extending your arms out, feel your shoulder blades coming together at the back, core nice and strong. Maintaining that knee right over top of your ankles and toes. Feel that right foot nice and strong behind you. And we'll transition to our extended side angle, taking your left palm all the way down onto the mat. Lift your right arm up overhead. Gaze towards that top end if it feels okay to bring your neck. Continuing to breathe and feel strong through that right leg. You can stay here or transition into your bind, grabbing a hold of your right wrist with that left hand, reaching all the way underneath your thigh, feeling open throughout the chest, so we're still maintaining that rotation towards the side. A couple more breaths here. And transitioning through into easy twists of lifting your back heel and extending your left arm all the way up overhead, feeling this nice long line. Gaze is up towards the sky. So the energy reaching through that back leg. And from here, we transition into wild things. So taking yourself into side plank and then extending that left leg back behind you. Replant your left, or sorry, your right sole of your foot as you extend into this arch. Feel stable through that right shoulder. That right shoulder blade is wrapping around your back, keeping you nice and supported here. Take a couple more breaths. And we will rotate back to plank. Hold here for a second. Catch your breath. And exhale down to chaturanga. Inhale all the way to upper dog. Tuck the toes and exhale down the dog. Take a second here, reconnect with your breath. And we're gonna fold forward to plank. And now from here, dropping your forearms down onto the mat, keeping them shoulder width distance apart so you don't want your elbows to splay out to the sides at all. And now from here, you're gonna walk your feet in, finding dolphin pose. So this is basically like downward dog, just with your forearms down on the floor. And you'll feel right away that your shoulders and your shoulder blades have to do a lot more work in this posture. Make sure your shoulders are still pushing away from the ears. So there is still lots of space for a nice long neck. Your core is engaged. And pushing the floor away from you through those elbows, through the palms of your hands. Trying to keep your, your elbows in line with your shoulders. We'll take another five breaths here, continuing to breathe deeply. And walking your feet back out, let your hips rest all the way down onto the floor. And then coming into a little bit of an arch here. So this is Sphinx pose. How difficult do you want to make this posture? Depends on how close your elbows are to your body. So the closer your elbows are, the more intense the stretch. The farther away from you, the less intense the stretch. So you can gauge what level of intensity you would like for this arch here. Feel your shoulder blades wide across your back, opening up through the chest. Keep pressing through your fingers. Feel your belly expanding on the mound of your heel. And we'll release. Place your hands right underneath your shoulders. Send your hips back, finding a wide like a child's pose. So toes together, knees apart, and let your forehead melt onto the mat. Allow your hips to melt towards your heels. 
And as always, breathing deeply. Allow your heart rate to return to normal. And slowly start to lift your head, walk your hands back in. And we're going to come to a seated position. I'm just going to turn to face you. And bringing the soles of your feet together, we're going to come into a butterfly fold. So just uh, place your feet as far away from your hips as is comfortable for you. And we're just going to make this more of a passive fold. So on an inhale, just sit up nice and tall, feel long through your spine, right on top of your sit bones. And then on an exhale, just fully fold forward. Relax the head, relax the spine. And now I actually have a lot of tightness in my, my upper spine. So when I do a forward fold like this in butterfly, I actually feel a nice release through the top of my spine. Now you might feel this more through your hips or in a different place in your back, but wherever you feel this the most, just imagine you're sending your breath to that place, allowing it to expand, allowing it to release. And the key here is to fully let your neck relax and just allow the weight of your head to be what pulls you far, farther forward into the stretch. So try not to have any tension throughout the neck. Really let the head go. Taking a couple more breaths here. And to come on up, we're gonna pull the belly button in and slowly roll up through the spine. Head and shoulders are the last thing to recover. Now we're gonna come into knee pile pose. So you're going to take your left leg and bend it on the mat underneath you. And then you're going to cross your right leg over top so your knees are coming into a pile. This is a position with the legs that I actually find fairly challenging. So you'll notice there is a little bit of a space here. It is something I am working on, so it may look and feel a little bit different for you, but we're going to, we're going to add eagle arms with this seated posture. So you're going to take your right arm, cross it underneath your left, wrap them around once or twice to bring your hands together and then lifting your elbows up, inhaling, feeling a nice long spine, and then on an exhale, folding forward over those legs. Now your arms may reach all the way to the floor or they may just rest on top of your knee like mine do, but wherever you are, just breathe into the center of your back, right between your shoulder blades, feeling that nice long expansion. Trying to also release into the hips in this knee pile pose. Try also to relax your neck. And on your next inhale, come on all the way back up, release your hands, and then let your legs unwind. From here, we're just gonna let the knees fall from side to side in kind of a windshield washer motion. And then reversing. So now you're going to take your left leg. Nope, that's what we just did. We're gonna take our right leg, place it on the floor underneath us, and then wrap your left leg up on top. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually reversing this for you, so sometimes my brain gets tripped up with what side we're actually doing. So right now we have our left leg on top. You're going to take your left arm, wrap it underneath your right, wrapping once or twice to bring the palms or the hands together. Same as we did before, inhaling to reach tall. Feel both sit bones grounded into the floor before we exhale and fold forward, letting your elbows rest wherever they land. Relax. 
relaxing your neck, coming into this forward fold. I don't have one with me today, but sometimes I will also do this pose with a block underneath my elbows, just to kind of close the gap between the floor and my arms. That helps me release a little bit better into the stretch. So you can experiment for yourself and just see which, what kind of variation, what kind of props work best for you. We'll be here in this pose for three more breaths. And on your next inhale, firm up the belly to come all the way back up to a seated position. Let the arms unwind. And then once again, let your knees fall from side to side, just releasing those hips. And that is all for today. I am going to skip Shavasana, but feel free to do it for yourself if you're practicing at home. If you liked this video, please let me know in the comments below. I, uh, if you enjoyed it, I'd love to make a longer version of this class, so just let me know your thoughts. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe to SKR Yoga and Wellness. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for practicing with me and have a great rest of your day.